your show. So I can tell them a little early because we don't our numbers haven't kicked up as high yet because people are like, oh, she's she never kicks in until 8:15, 8:30, 8:45. Sorry guys, we have to meet the builder um, at uh, nine o'clock this morning at the farm to go over how we're laying out our closets. Um, I never realized how much minutia goes into building a house. We spend a lot of time picking out light switches and door handles and drawer knobs <laughs> and just little stuff that you don't really think about but the wait time right now for th stuff that you have to order like our siding is like a six week wait um everything's in short supply because of covid and manufacturing problems so uh can i talk about him sarcoma someday I've talked about it a lot, but I will be happy to talk. I mean, we seem to be on a cancer bend at the moment. Um, but anyway, when I was clearing out email this morning, I found something in one of my veterinary emails talking about a melanoma study. And my mom lost her first standard schnauzer to melanoma. It started in her toe in the nail bed and um then spread to lymph nodes and ended up in her mouth and she had an oral melanoma and of course when they chew on those they bleed and it was a mess and um so that was what uh resulted in her demise and melanomas are very very common in gray animals we have uh melanomas in horses quite often in old gray horses particularly old gray mares um uh, the barn owner where we used to keep our horses up in New Jersey, she lost an old gray mare to that. Um, that was one of the things that contributed to the death of one of Gwen's uh, early ponies. Um, I think when we bought the pony, she was probably 28 or 30 years old, and uh, we had her for quite a few years. But um, they're just they, in the horses, they just show up at, as subcutaneous lumps. Uh, in the dogs, we tend to see these dark black, uh, especially in the mouth, they'll be very glisteny. Um, they're, they're pretty uh, obvious when they take on that appearance. However, I have had patients that have had amelanotic melanomas, which basically is a melanoma tumor that doesn't have pigment. So it doesn't have that black appearance and you wouldn't uh, look at it uh, externally and say, wow, that looks like a melanoma until you get the biopsy back and go, oh crap, that's a melanoma because they can be very aggressive. So um, the study uh, is being actually run by the Veterans Administration at the um, University of Wisconsin Madison School of Veterinary Medicine. And so they're teaming up together. Um, it's combining canines, cancer, and the military. In the study, we're trying to turn the immune system back on again, specifically against a patient's cancer, which is really cool. I think using immunotherapy, that's sort of more what we do as holistic veterinarians. We're trying to turn the immune system back into working the right way, build the immune system to attack the cancer from within, uh, instead of just throwing chemicals and drugs and horrible things into the body that stress the immune system even more. So I'm really happy that they're looking at things like gene therapy and immunotherapy. Um, so the Department of Veterans Affairs is funding the research because many veterans overseas develop melanoma from sun exposure and researchers have found similarities between cancer in dogs and people. Well, sure. Uh, you had a 30 year old Arab never got melanoma for some reason or none that you could see. Yeah. A lot of times it's, um, it's internal, so you don't see it. Um, so it says with the hope of informing human trials that are also going on, uh, with ongoing with this type of treatment, instead of surgery or chemotherapy, the treatment involves a combination of radiation and antibody injections to attack the tumor. So basically melanoma antibodies, uh, going after the tumor, so the body is trying to make the tumor go away, which is pretty awesome, and radiation can be used to shrink them, so as, as long as they're external where they can be seen. Um, so there's a person that they interviewed has been driving two hours regularly for her dog to take part in the trial. The dog has malignant melanoma on the roof of the mouth, and that's a pretty common area to have it, and it's an area where we don't normally necessarily look. Um, and the owner says, you think, how long? You don't know. Am I counting down hours, minutes, or days? 
Um, after about two months, the dog's tumor shrunk to at least half the original size, which is awesome. Uh, she said it's an honor for him to be a part of it, and it's just great and incredible connection, and we're blessed and thankful for it. Uh, the dog has a better quality of life, but isn't completely cured. Uh, a small amount of the cancer has spread to his lungs. To be clear, the study does not give the dog's cancer. It treats those who have already been diagnosed with melanoma. And to see if your dog is eligible for the trial, you can contact the uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, all veterinary colleges have ongoing studies for different things. Uh, my practices in southern New Jersey, we were within 45 minutes to an hour of University of Pennsylvania Veterinary School. So we would get uh, faxes pretty much every week with the ongoing studies that, that they had and how we could get patients enrolled in different things. A lot of the larger um, specialty hospitals also do get funding to do trials with patients uh, from from different sources. So. Sometimes if you have an animal with something uh, something bad and maybe you can't afford chemo or radiation or treatments, if you can get them enrolled in one of these studies, you do have to agree to their to their demands uh, because the study has to be controlled. so they will they will they will place parameters that you would have to follow. Uh, for instance, they might say, well, your dog can't eat a raw diet or your dog must be up to date on vaccines or your dog must be on heartworm preventative or your dog can't be on any other medications that would interfere with the study. Um, but it's, it's, it's worth looking into if you have an animal with a cancer or something. Oh, Hong Kong, welcome. Um, if you have an animal with something, uh, that the prognosis might not be good or the, you know, just unknown. Uh, sometimes it can be worth your while to do a little searching through the veterinary schools in your, that are within a driving distance or any big research hospitals that are near you to see if there are any studies available. Um, so true, o Ohio State University offers lots of trials. You can get a free MRI for the SM trial. Yeah, Ohio State has done a lot of uh, SM work for the Cavaliers. So uh, tons, of, tons of resources out there. Um, but melanoma, uh, the melanoma vaccine, they call it the melanoma vaccine, but it's basically an antibody injection, uh, has been around for a few years, uh, you know, at least in the talking and experimental stages. Um, and I think that uh, we, need, we need to stand behind some of this research that's going on, particularly when they're talking about using antibodies and things that are more in the, the natural wheelhouse. So I, I kind of like that a lot. Um, talked to, oh, Malaysia. Man, we got people from all over today. Uh, I talked to Gwen yesterday and gave her a long list of uh, supplements to get Mila started on. Her onco oncology appointment is March 31st. Um, and then Gwen sent me a picture of where the, the mast cell tumor is on Mila. And it's, um, it's one and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeters. So it's oval. And it's about at least a third of the way down her tail. So um, perhaps maybe that injection would be able to be used because it's uh, not as close up to the body wall as I thought it was. Uh, and then Gwen said, well, what about the option of uh, amputating her tail? Because it looks like we could get far enough up above it. And I said, well, that would be an option as well. So um, Mila, Mila's tail is part of her signature. It is long. It is a whip. It hurts like heck and she wags it all the time. So I would hate to see her lose it, but uh, I don't want... Um, ah, so please manage to get your books in the UK. Yay. Are shiitake mushroom the only type to give dogs? No. Uh, shiitake, reishi, uh, maitake, turkey tail, lion's mane. Uh, those are the medicinal ones, but any mushrooms can be helpful uh, for the bowel. They are a nice prebiotic, nice fiber source. Uh, they're draining. Uh, good for a lot of things. Uh, Australia dealing with major flooding. Sorry. Actually, we've had a lot of rain, but no flooding. Hopefully our grass seed will be very happy. Yesterday it was like 77 degrees. Very muggy, very humid. We did not get any of the bad weather right here where we are. I know that around the state they got a lot of bad weather. Um, 
And I just want to, uh, good morning, Dennis Becker. I just, uh, thanks for the referral to the radio station or the TV station, Dennis. Uh, they'll be airing the segment on Monday. Um, I, I want to thank everyone. I noticed this morning when I was signing on that we are over 72,000 followers. Uh, we really appreciate the support. We appreciate you telling your friends. Uh, that's what helps us reach our goal of changing the lives of at least 10 million pets worldwide. Um, I, I was thinking about that the other day. We got we got to be there. It's one of those things that's really hard to um, to measure. Really hard to measure. But we're reaching people literally around the world, as you can see, um, with who's on today, just from all over the place. Uh, Joey, fasting is not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Okay. Ah, Teresa says your Cavalier Joe is in that study. Yeah, there's a lot of studies. There's uh, MVD studies going on. Lots, lots of different things. Um, CavalierHealth.org, for those of you with Cavaliers, generally has a lot of information. So, um, all right, everybody have a wonderful day. Supporters, I'll post it, but we'll do our usual Friday night thing. Um, see how much work I can get done between now and then. <laughs> It's been a really, really, really busy week, but fun. And uh, finally seeing light at the end of the tunnel for getting this uh, cooking cooking 101 or home-prepared dog food 101 because it could be raw. Um, so it's been fun. Just a little frustrating with the computer, but other than that, it's been fun. Spaniel cataract study. Yeah, I mean, there's so many studies out there. You just have to look for them. So... Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, some of you will see you tonight. Till then.